Hey guys, this is Bennett, one of the other C3PO builders. Um, the question popped up on the Facebook page the other day, how do you pack your suit when you're traveling across the country, traveling on airlines, having to send your through, suit through uh, TSA, things like that, how you do that safely without worrying that TSA is going to destroy your suit. Um, I've been doing this about eight or nine years now. Um, my suit has traveled from where I originally lived in Kansas City to Georgia and now out to Washington State with me uh, where I'm living. And in between all those places, it has traveled uh, back and forth between them for uh, events, weddings, comic cons, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, my suit's probably been through the airlines uh, seven or eight times now. So uh, hopefully I can I share a little bit of my experience and give some uh, good thoughts as a good way to pack your suit up. First, let me show the boxes we're working with. Um, Stanley, DeWalt, and I believe Husky also makes one of these uh, big old 50 gallon boxes. Uh, pretty recognizable to most people in the costume world. We use them for stormtroopers and other costumes all the time. But it's uh, really about taking one of these boxes and packing it in a way that's going to keep your suit safe. Um, over here in the DeWalt box, this was my original C-3PO box. Um, you can see there's a bunch of one inch and two inch foam in there, padded out the top. The padding goes throughout the edges and across the bottom. Uh, the Stormtrooper lives in here now because the uh, latch, one of these latches, broke at a Comic-Con um, after some poor handling. But um, So it can't go on airlines anymore, but um, still a good box. Stanley is the box that has C-3PO for me. I'm going to unlatch it and show you what we've got going on in here. Um, Again, everything's pretty much lined with this two inch foam. A couple places I use one inch foam. That foam can be bought at any of your hobby stores. You know, soft parts like the ninja shoes, you know, they smash flat. Who really cares? They can sit up there. Um, belly wires. And then we'll get, uh, I've got a very small uh, emergency repair kit for traveling. And then right under this top piece of foam, we've got the chest. And you can see that chest is tucked in there pretty tight between the foam on either side. There is not a whole lot of back and forth there. Um, your antennas here can get knocked loose if this thing gets really roughly handled. Um, in all the times I've traveled with it, that has not happened to me using all this foam and this packing method. Um, so let me set the phone down and I'll show you what things kind of look like on the inside here. Um, inside the chest, you won't be able to see very well, but my hands and my shoulder bells and my shoulder rings are all in here. Those are all wrapped individually in old t-shirts to keep them from scratching up against each other. Now I'll take another look in here. You can see there is more padding right here that was underneath the chest, and that was protecting the arms that are down there underneath each other. And they're kind of stacked, but again, I've got a piece of foam wedged in there so they aren't directly scratching on one another. Um, over on this side of things, we've got my legs in those black bags and the two halves of my shorts in these t-shirts. They're just kind of nicely tucked together and pressed up against the legs. We'll move those out of the way. And I'll show you what the legs look like in one of their bags here. Um, so these bags, I forget what they are called, just little zippy bags um, that were available online. Um, I've got four of those bags total um, to hold the thighs and the calf pieces. And let me show you what that looks like here. So, let's see here, we've got just one bag, and in this bag we've got our thigh. Um, still looks pretty good 10 years later after all that travel and only being protected by a bag like that. So that's one of the bags. Inside that bag is tucked our calf piece. Uh, and then tucked inside the calf piece, um, 
my shoes are real banged up and they're rubber shoes that were spray painted. They're not back to metalized like the rest of it. So I don't really care much if they get scratched up by sitting inside here, but if your shoe is vacuum metalized, um, you might put that like in your carry on with your helmet or something like that, or just make sure you wrap it with a real soft t-shirt um, so that it is protected when you stick it down in the, in the calf like that. Um, So, and then that black bag there is just the other leg, another piece of foam that kind of helps separate these leg pieces from the arm. And the arm, when it's bent like that, is pretty, it's pretty stuck in there. Um, both of them are. They really don't move back and forth a whole bunch, especially once I add the other foam pieces. Um, so that's kind of what that setup looks like. And again, the bottom down there, that's another two inches of foam. So that's kind of what that setup looks like, guys. Um, obviously, um, you know, each piece could be wrapped even more so with extra t-shirts, more foam could probably be packed in there. Um, but I mentioned I've done this seven or eight times with this type of setup and I've not had it been uh, busted up any times I've done that. Um, TSA, is always going to open your box um, because it does not fit through their scanners. They've got these uh, x-ray scanners, they try to shove your box through and uh, it's a big round hole and this is a square box that's too big to go through the round hole. The first time I traveled with the suit, I actually watched TSA barrel roll my box multiple times um, and I was terrified. I thought I was gonna show up uh, to my event when I landed with a really busted up suit. But despite their best efforts, uh, the suit was completely in one piece, uh, nothing got knocked loose at all. I was uh, really impressed with the way the foam and everything kept it protected. So when the thing doesn't fit through their x-ray scanner, they uh, are required to open it and they wave their magic wand around to make sure that you're not carrying bombs or uh, some other nonsense like that. So do not lock these boxes. They have a way that you can lock them, but do not lock them if you're traveling through uh, airport security with them. Leave it unlocked so the TSA can get in there wave their wand around. They do not tend to actually take pieces out. Um, they can stick their wand down in little crevices and wipe it against things and that kind of tells them what they need to know. Um, what else? Um, the uh, helmet is thing that I put in there. Helmet is hanging out over here and uh, over there with a cardboard C3PO. The helmet goes in a carry-on with me. Um, backpack or however you want to travel with your helmet. I just haven't found a good way that it also fix, fits into that Stanley tote. Um, so I just carry it with me. It's one of the cooler and more important parts of the costume anyway. So uh, it makes a nice conversational piece when it goes through the scanner as a carry-on. Uh, you get some pretty interesting reactions back there. That's uh, kind of the nutshell version. I made this video a little longer than I meant to, but it's because I ramble a lot. I hope that was helpful for you all. If there's questions, put it in the comments. I can take more pictures and try to help you all feel safe traveling with your suits as best I can. Uh, have a good one and may the force be with you.